OK. My layout of the presentation tonight I have introduction, definition of ultrasound report, the structure of the ultrasound report, the style, and my conclusion. So just in the introduction, ultrasound plays an integral role in patient management. The role of a sonographer as the frontline practitioner is to image, sorry, my internet is a little bit unstable, but I'll try to make it stable. The role of a sonographer as the frontline practitioner is to image the patient, interpret, and identify any possible abnormalities. Finally, a sonographer issues a written or typed diagnostic ultrasound report as a communication to the referring clinician. So what is an ultrasound report? An ultrasound report is a mode of communication between radiology departments that is the ultrasound section and the referring clinician. And this report constitutes of a clinical opinion, provides a specialist interpretation of the sonographic images or findings. It should be accurate, concise, and informative. So who should be involved in writing an ultrasound report. Uh, I was trying to read some literature, which I was trying to compare with what we are using in Zambia. And uh, from the United Kingdom, that is the UK, it is recommended that the person performing ultrasound also produce the reports. So meaning if you are imaging, you should also do the report writing. This also applies in Zambia, uh, where mostly sonographers performing ultrasonography writes the ultrasound report as well. There are other countries like Australia. Uh, these countries, uh, sometimes you find that there is a, a radiologist performing then it's written by the, the, the radiographer or a sonographer performs, then it's written by the radiologist. But now also Australia, they are changing. They are going, most of them, they are going into the report writing. So the people involved in writing an ultrasound report include radiologists, the doctors, the radiographers, sonographers, physiotherapists, and point of care nurses. So if you look at physiotherapists, um, some are trained um, at a certain level where they can do ultrasonography. It's not that they report everything, but they are just speci specialized in certain parts. For example, in the musculoskeletal. So they just report on musculoskeletal and nothing else. Then point of care nurses, uh, and doctors, these are the doctors and nurses who are also specialized in uh, emergency ultrasonography. So they also report just basically what they are taught and just in these specialties, nothing else. So how does uh, an ultrasound report uh, look like? So we are looking at the structure so although there is uh, no consensus over what constitutes the diagnostic ultrasound report, there is good agreement in the literature on the structure of a good diagnostic report, the ultrasound report globally. Generally, 
the ultrasound report should consist of the following. So it has the, the title, all those things we will look as we go on. So we have the title and the ultrasound report should have a title and a targeted area of interest. And the, the example I've given is uh, if a clinician has requested for an abdominal ultrasound and they are querying, for example, a patient has uh, a liver, liver problem or liver pathology. So there we are looking at the title, which should be uh, an abdominal ultrasound. And the target area there should be hepatobiliary tract because this is what you are going to address as the area of interest. Although you are going to address this as an area of interest, don't forget that you are doing an abdominal scan. There are other organs which you should also look at. So once you look at those other organs, sometimes you come across that you see some incidental findings you also report. So the report also should have patient identification. And this patient identification, it includes the demographics, uh, the date of examination. This demographic this is where you have patient address, what they do. So that those are demographics. Then date of examination performed and reported. Then the recipients and the providers details. So it should also have indication which should include history and clinical information of the patient. This is the most important area, actually. That's if a, that by. We have if a patient if a patient has no clinical indications, um, it's quite difficult for someone to, to give a report because you don't know what you are basing on. So it's always important that you look at the request form, make sure these details are there. That's when it becomes a, a relevant and uh, you report properly so that a patient gets quality work. And this will be addressed to the clinician. <laughs> In the technique and procedural description, if it's required, you can also put it there. Then another aspect of the structure, we have the, the findings. And these findings is where you have uh, a body where you are just going to describe the, the report. So in this, uh, the body is where you have the description of your findings and your measurements. So the, the diagnostic ultrasound report should present the findings in a log logical sequence in the order of the examination performed. And the report should describe normal and abnormal observations and provide relevant interpretation in the comments. So basically the, the, the findings, it just talks about how you are imaging the abnormalities. And remember that when you are reporting, it should be in present term. As, as if you are seeing these structures. Then the incidental finding should be included as I've mentioned, and you alert the doctor if it is significant and if a patient needs to be helped as quickly as possible. So once you find these incidental findings, please take note of the doctor's alert. Then where measurements are provided, it is important to ensure measurement units are used consistently. 
For example, in an obstetric report, measurements should not mix centimeters and millimeters. So if you are looking at um, a structure, you are measuring it and uh, you are using centimeters, don't convert to millimeters. Just be consistent with the centimeters. If it's in millimeters, it should be in millimeters. So there should be that consistency in the report writing. Then we should look at uh, the conclusion of the report. I know a report should have a summary. So from your findings, this summary, you should come up with a, a diagnosis. And uh, that diagnosis, you are going to answer the clinical question and give recommendations. So the final summary should consist of final interpretive comments, recommendations when appropriate, and any extra actions taken. No new information should be introduced that does not exist in the finding section of the report. So in this uh, point, I'm just trying to elaborate that, for example, you you are describing on the liver. You describe the liver and then in your conclusion, you add something which you did not describe about the liver. So you, this is what I mean by not introducing something which you did not uh, describe. So it uh, brings about uh, oh, some controversial when you are reporting. And the doctors tend to be confused because you never described it and then you bring it out when you have concluded. Then the, con the inclusion of sonograms, those are the pictures or some other relevant uh, reference should be included. And these uh, pictures, you make sure that they are of good quality because you can't give a doctor uh, a picture which has, has no meaning. So make sure that these pictures, you have imaged them properly and labeled them properly. And then uh, the contrast should be very good so that it will be interpreted properly with other people because the, be reminded that when you are imaging, you are not imaging for yourself or just for the doctors within. You are imaging for other people also to be, to interpret it. So we should bear in mind that uh, as we print, because these pictures are also part of the report. As you give the doctors pictures, let's good, give them the pictures in relation to what they had requested. Then uh, there is a style in which uh, we write reports. Um, the ultrasound report should have logical structure, clarity, accuracy, and should be concise and they try to attempt to answer the clinical question and give the differential. So this is just like you are diagnosing. And if possible, there should be some suggestions for further management. So to achieve a good communication in report writing, conveying of medical and scientific information requires a particular style. So this style, we have um, a structured and unstructured style. So most clinicians, they prefer structured style. In a structured style, mostly you find that things are written in a logical order and you follow. But where it's unstructured, it's haphazard. Clinicians have a problem with me 
getting the information of what you are trying to relay. So as I said, uh, my presentation is a short one. I conclude. Ultrasound plays an important role in patient management in Zambia, including other countries. And the role of a sonographer as the frontline practitioner is to image the patient, interpret, and identify any possible abnormalities. Uh, this is where I end my presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Madam Helen, for this uh, good presentation. Yes, it, it's short, but a very important as we remind ourselves in our everyday uh, practice of ultrasound. At this point, we will allow questions. Uh, we can start with uh, Mr. Mwansa. You can go ahead, sir. Uh, sorry, it was a mistake. So sorry. Okay. Uh, try next. Okay, good evening. Thank you, ma'am, for this wonderful presentation on report writing. I have a question. Uh, under impression and conclusion, uh, you highlighted that we're supposed to, we are supposed to maybe suggest for further management. How far should we go as far as recommend, recommend, recommendations? Um, the reason why I'm asking, I've come across um, in some departments whereby they say, whenever you are recommending in your, report, in your reports, you should always re recommend within uh, your scope of, uh, okay, within radiology. Let's say you've seen a mass uh, during an ultrasound scan, you can only recommend as far as maybe another uh, imaging modality such as CT. Um, how far should we go as far as recommendations uh, for further management is concerned? Should we get as far as the laboratory wake up, as far as some other uh, tests which are beyond uh, radiology? How far should we go? in terms of radiology, in terms of um, recommendations. I've had uh, encounters whereby um, some will be saying, uh, you don't have to recommend. It's like you're telling the doctor what to do, yet the doctor already knows that once he sees uh, the report saying uh, there's a liver mass, the next port of call is CT. Like how, how far should we go in, in, in terms of recommendations? That's my question, thank you. Thank you, Madam Tracy, for that question. It's a good question and the most important. Um, you should know that most of these things, ultrasound complement with other imaging modalities. But um, when you are reporting, you have that limit where you cannot see maybe certain structures. And because of the limitation of uh, the imaging, you can only re recommend within your study scope. Um, most clinicians actually who have said, they don't want you to tell them what, what you think would be right for them. And then the mistake we always made, we don't read the clinical history of the patient, or other investigations they've done. We overlook that. You might find that maybe they've done already what you are recommending. Then you are telling them that to, to do a CT is unnecessary. And sometimes there are patients who, who have organ failure. You cannot recommend the CT because they already know that this patient will not even achieve to do the CT. Uh, 